baby, the race is heating up. Space Race 2.0. This time, the goal is not the moon, but the red planet. Mars, the famous candy bar, god of war, and agricultural guardian. Folks have been vying to put boots on this far off space orb for quite a while, and with recent news of China landing a rover on the planet, we're another step closer. So let's ask what Americans are probably scared of, what if China lands on Mars first? Humans have been doing their best to explore Mars for a while now. It doesn't seem that long ago, but our first rover touched down in 1997. The process of getting there was long and arduous, but it was a major step towards exploring the planet. Interplanetary exploration is no easy task, and more than half the spacecraft sent towards Mars never make it. Yikes. The main goal of missions like these was to learn about the makeup of Mars, from geology to potential habitability. Right now, there are three operational rovers on the surface of Mars, two from the United States and the most recent from China. In addition to the rovers, there are eight orbiters surveying the planet, taking in data from way above the ground. Lots and lots of coverage for sure. There are also plenty of probes around and a few missions looking to land more stuff on Mars in the future. The earliest missions were put together by the Soviets and largely involved probes and satellites. Incredibly, this took place back in the 60s and 70s. Nothing would touch down on the planet until the late 90s though, with the Mars Pathfinder making a lot of headway. This was considered a major success as it both made it to Mars and ended up being proof of concept for some useful new technologies. Between the 90s and now, a lot has changed. Manned missions are within reach more so than ever before, especially with private companies throwing their hat into the ring alongside government space programs. Right now, there are multiple plans to put humans on Mars within the next 30 years, which is crazy to imagine. It's all been science fiction up until this point, but here we are. What's space travel without a competition though? Let's see if we can wedge a brand new space race in there and see what happens. It's been a while since these states faced off against a decidedly red opponent in an attempt to make it to an extraterrestrial finish line. China's recent rover success has raised some eyebrows, so why wouldn't they attempt to put some boots on red soil, right? As of right now, there have only been a few officially announced plans to put people on Mars. Plenty of proposals have been put forward over the years, many of which came from all sorts of different countries. But if we're looking at the two countries at the forefront of the conversation, especially in this video, we're going to be looking at the United United States and China. In 2006, the China National Space Administration announced that it would be starting deep space exploration, focusing on Mars over the next five years. Uncrewed exploration would happen between 2014 and 2033, with the crewed portion following from 2040 to 2060. Their crewed missions would involve people touching down on Mars and then returning home. This is quite different from some of the more popular US proposals. A lot of folks out west seem to prefer the idea of colonizing the red planet, having people head over and then stay there for good. This idea has been floated in all sorts of different spheres, from independent entities claiming they could set up some sort of Mars base, to governments announcing their timelines for landing folks on Mars. A particularly interesting proposal came from the Dutch group Mars One. They claim to be able to set up a Mars base by 2023, with more trips taking place every couple years afterwards. Mars One accepted applications from would-be astronauts all across the world for a fee. However, after all of their high hopes and expectations, the commercial arm of Mars One went bankrupt in 2019. 2023 seemed a little close anyways. A few of the majorly touted missions to Mars lately have been NASA's Journey to Mars and Moon to Mars programs and SpaceX's Mars Transportation Infrastructure. NASA published a strategy in 2015 concerning their efforts to get some sustained human presence on Mars with three distinct phases. We are currently in Phase 1, which is titled Earth Reliant, and is mainly focused on learning more about space technologies and the long-term effects that interplanetary travel could have on the human body. Phase 2, also known as Proving Ground, would see a lot of the technologies developed get more extensively tested, especially deep space habitation facilities. Then with Phase 3, or Earth Independent, we'd see long-term missions to Mars's surface, using habitats that only require routine maintenance, and attempts to acquire further resources from Mars itself, like fuel, water, and building materials. These human missions to Mars are targeting the 2030s, but true Earth independence could take decades longer. That all seems a little more accomplishable than a base by 2023, eh? We'll see how quickly this technology can advance. Now, when it comes to SpaceX, there are a lot of questions. 
As a privately owned enterprise, they don't have to be as forthcoming about their plans. SpaceX does love publicity though and has made a lot of announcements. They've been doing plenty of launches and landings, making sure their tech is up to snuff. Apparently, SpaceX planned on sending a capsule to Mars a couple years ago, but never got around to it. That hasn't stopped them from laying the groundwork for an eventual trip though. SpaceX is planning on sending vessels to confirm water sources and set up some infrastructure for further missions. However, this was planned for 2022, with additional manned missions to capitalize on that work by 2024. It's possible that these plans do not come to fruition though. However, SpaceX continues to develop more and more space travel technology, so we'll see how it all plays out over the next decade or so. This leaves us with the question posed at the very beginning of the video. What if China makes it first? That would be extremely interesting indeed, especially considering their plans that seem to predict a much later touchdown. The rover is a good start, but unmanned expeditions versus manned ones could show a very different experience. It could be that China has been developing their Mars mission tech in secret, and may very well be ready to go before any American-based explorer. NASA has a goal that seems to be ahead of China's, and SpaceX's plans appear to be getting ahead of themselves a little bit. But if China touches down first, especially with people in tow, that could mean a lot in terms of who has claimed the planet. Looking at the rate of failure in Mars missions, one has to be careful when sending human lives into space. Astronauts would have to be willing to put their lives on the line for such an expedition, probably more so than any other space mission. Would folks working for a private company be more likely to take that risk, or would a more totalitarian government like China's manage to get more volunteers? We are still many years away from such a revelation, but it's worth thinking about. So, what do you think? Are we close to touching down on Mars with a bunch of folks? Would we be ready to colonize the planet, or would it be a temporary visit? Who will make it there first? Make sure you let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more luxurious ones from what does Obama confirming UFOs mean for America? Explosive Middle Fingers guy says it means that we officially know we are not alone in the universe. Darn tootin'. Now let's share some of that extraterrestrial technology, yeah? Andrea Cooperino says the reason they're happening in America is that the military is responsible, in my opinion. But I do believe in aliens too. The American military messed up? No way. Neon Pop 80 says it's completely ignorant to say that most sightings are in the US. That just shows you're completely uninformed on the topic. The phenomena is literally in every place in the world. Sounds like something an alien would say. Lou Zicarius says, the real question is why every UFO video ever is in 144p quality. They've got radar jammers on board, of course. And Flying Ant says, chances are they're not aliens. I'm betting on interdimensionals. Now wouldn't that be a discovery for the ages? That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Let's get this little, uh, oh yeah. Get that nice, uh, get that nice light in there. A little bit of Rembrandt going on. I know there's not much of a shadow, but it's dramatic. Oh, I'm already recording. Whoops. All right. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, my goodness. Would we be ready to colonize the planet, or would it be a temporary visit? I can't believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>